Personally, if someone tells me not to go somewhere, it kind of makes me want to go there more. Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. I'm your host Emily and today we're counting down our list of the top 10 prohibited areas in Ohio no human can enter. And if you try to enter, well, good luck. Before we move on to the next point, I just wanted to say that spring is finally here and it's a time for renewal, so why not brush up on your language skills? And there is no better way to do this than using the app Babbel. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world. Though I learned how to speak French years ago, I've become a little rusty over time, so I've used Babbel to help me regain my skills. And whether you want to learn a completely new language or practice one you already know, this app is for you. Babbel is scientifically proven to help you start speaking a new language in three weeks, which is like super fast. And most importantly, Babbel teaches real world conversations. Lessons prepare you to have practical conversations about travel, business, relationships, and more. One of the most important phrases I've learned in French is où sont les toilettes, aka where is the restroom. Yeah, pretty important if you're traveling abroad. Now, if you want to learn a new language, Babbel is the app for you, and right now you can get 60% off on your subscription. All you have to do is click the link in our video description to sign up and get your discount. It's that easy. And for that, I say merci, which means thank you. Now, let's get back into our list. Number 10, Newbury Airplane Boneyard. In Newbury, Ohio, resident Walter Saplata hosted a collection of military aircrafts from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Though often called an airplane graveyard, Walter would have preferred the term sanctuary, as he was saving the aircrafts from being turned into scrap metal. The sanctuary featured approximately 20 stray aircrafts that Walter collected from his scrapyard job in Cleveland, junking thousands of warplane engines that were declared surplus, according to his son Wally Saplata in a November 2007 issue of Air and Space magazine. Walter used to open his property to the public, but in recent years, the aircraft boneyard has been kept private. He passed away in November 2010, and today it is unclear what remains of the aircraft graveyard. Number 9. Giaga Lake Amusement Park What was once the world's largest theme park is now an overgrown land of decaying roller coasters, empty concession stands, and abandoned ticket booths. In 1925, the park cemented its place in amusement park history when the Big Dipper roller coaster was built. At the time, it was the largest roller coaster ever built, but soon tragedy struck. Following all of its success, the park experienced some setbacks. In 1942, the park was hit by a tornado, six people were injured, and the park experienced a lot of structural damages, around $50,000. Further tragedy struck in 1952 when a massive fire engulfed parts of the park, destroying many key features of the park, including the famous dance hall, the theater, the roller rink, and the bowling alley, amounting to $500,000 in damages. From 2000 to 2004, the park was expanded and became Six Flags Ohio. From 2004 to 2007, it became known as Giagua Lake again under the ownership of Cedar Fair. But on September 21st, 2007, Cedar Fair announced that the park would not be reopening and it has been abandoned ever since. Number 8. Cincinnati's Abandoned Subway In the 20th century, Cincinnati decided to build a subway system after canals quickly became even more of a nuisance than they had been when they were bringing in trade. The plan was made in 1912 to build a 16-mile rapid transit rail system in a loop around the city, with a branch undergoing and heading downtown. More than 80% of the people of Cincinnati said yes to the new railway, but work on it didn't start until after World War I on January 28, 1920. Despite several delays, the two-mile underground portion of the subway was completed in 1923. Proposals came and went in the 30s, but none were implemented. A 1948 study finally ended the Cincinnati subway for good, though efforts to do something with the tunnels have been constantly ongoing for more than half a century. Ideas have included a bomb shelter, a shopping and nightlife district, a massive wine cellar, and more rapid transit. The latest proposal is for another subway. I-75 was built, destroying a large segment of the underground passage, but one of the city's best kept secrets is the fact that section of the original subway still remain, including all four of the stations put in during initial construction. Today, all these passages are sealed off and they are used by Cincinnati Waterworks only. Most of the entrances have been gated or concreted over. Now, access is both illegal and extremely difficult. And no, people, this is not a challenge. Number 7. Chippewa Lake Park Tucked away in the Medina County, there 
years, a rusted, lost, forgotten Ferris wheel. What was once Chippewa Lake Park is now just a few piles of amusement park ruins and the lone Ferris wheel. From 1878 to 1978, the amusement park was a popular, thriving destination for family entertainment. It closed after the final owner, Continental Business Enterprises, closed it due to lack of attendance. After the park's closure, its rise and structures were left largely untouched and unmaintained for over 40 years. Today, remnants of it creepily stand abandoned, rusted, and long forgotten. And fun fact, in 2008, a cast and crew from Los Angeles filmed the horror film Close for the season there. Number 6. Kerr's Run Colored School This schoolhouse for Black American children is one of the oldest remaining in southeastern Ohio. Currently, it's boarded up and overgrown with brush. The school educated children from the 1st to 8th grade, including James Edwin Campbell and James McHenry Jones, first and third presidents of what is now West Virginia State University. The school remained in operation from the late 1880s through the early 1900s, and in 2007, a historical marker was added to the school's site. The sign briefly documents the history and legacy of the school. Now the school is right beside an old church, and you can visit outside, but you shouldn't try to enter either building as they are in unsafe condition. Number 5. Franklin Castle Rumors about the Erie Castle began to surface after multiple deaths occurred in the Tideman family while living in the mansion. Hans, the father, allegedly tore down another house on the property where four of his children had died. His first wife, Louisa, died inside Franklin Castle in the 1890s, and he would eventually bury three more of his children and his mother. Since then, the location has been the site of mysterious hauntings. A family with six children called the Romanos had moved into the house, and on the day they moved in, two of their children said they'd encountered a crying girl in white on the third floor. But when Miss Romano investigated, no one was there. Soon, the family started hearing haunting organ music and heavy footsteps. Two of the older Romano children woke up one night to find something yanking blankets off their bed, and Miss Romano once awoke to find herself screaming on her bedroom floor with an unseen presence screaming beside her. A priest advised the Romanos to move out, and in 1974, they did, but the hauntings didn't stop when they left. From there, the house was sold again and again and again. Each new occupant reported strange occurrences like passing through odd vapors, hearing a child crying, or seeing a woman in black standing in the window. Unfortunately, this house is privately owned, so you cannot go and explore all the spookiness, but there is a lot of rich history here. Number 4. Warner and Swayze Observatory The Taylor Road Observatory was gifted to the Case School of Applied Science in 1919 by the Warner and Swayze Telescope Company. The original building was a domed tower construction with a powerful telescope that took advantage of the relatively undeveloped Cleveland sky that was at the time, much more free of light pollution. The site continued to develop in the decades, growing with more buildings and facilities, but unfortunately by 1950, the growth of the nearby city was shining too much ambient light into the night sky, and the telescope had to be moved to a new location in Arizona. The Taylor Road facility continued to conduct astronomical research in the 1970s, but the site was completely abandoned in 1982. Vines and decay accumulated on the walls as time and neglect took their toll on the observatory. However, it was finally repurchased in 2005 by real estate mongol Nair al-Mahid, who planned on returning the site into a luxury home. Unfortunately, his renovation didn't happen because in 2007, he was convicted of fraud and sent directly to jail. Today, the observatory continues to stand off Taylor Road, and it's best not to trespass and enter the building though because the area is unsafe. Number 3. The Peters Cartridge Company The Peters Cartridge Company was once an integral part of the local munitions production industry, but now the factory is abandoned. Built in the 1860s, the large building complex was established to support the Peters Cartridge Company. The factory began producing shot and cannonballs for the Union Army during the Civil War, and then continued to produce American munitions into the 1950s. The factory had a lot of accidents, though. In 1890, several train cars loaded with gunpowder Powder collided and exploded, ending the lives of 20 factory workers. There were a number of fires and machinery accidents as well, leaving employees maimed and physically disabled. Before the factory finally closed, the site was repurposed to press vinyl for Columbia Records, but eventually nothing was made of the tall brick buildings. As the factory buildings are extremely decayed, local police supervise the Peters Cartridge Company closely. Urban exploration is not advised, as floorboards are rotten and elevator shafts are empty 
in the buildings. Number two, Helltown. Yep, you heard that right. Why anyone would want to go to Helltown with a name like that, I have no clue. Founded in 1806, Boston Village, aka Helltown's claim to fame, was that it was standing as the oldest village in Summit County. Boston's relatively uneventful life took for a turn for the worst in 1974, when the National Park Service decided that Boston Township would be the new home for a new national park and began buying the properties of its longtime residents. The empty homes were boarded up and adorned with U.S. no trespassing signs. But then the government quickly fell behind on its plan to create the park and the village sat neglected. The hellish aura of the area only continued to grow when rangers visiting the site became ill and covered in rashes. It was soon discovered the dump was highly polluted with toxic chemicals improperly disposed of. Also in the village there is a church which is said to have been built by Satanists complete with upside down crosses. There's an abandoned bus that is said to be host to a lingering ghost, and maybe the most outlandish of all, there is talk of mutants who were created by the chemical spill, including a monstrous snake known as the Peninsula Python. And coming in at number one, Lima Tuberculosis Hospital. The Lima Tuberculosis Hospital was a tuberculosis sanatorium built in 1911 to deal with the leading causes of death in the United States in the early 20th century. Opening in 1911, it held 24 beds originally and was remodeled in 1927 to hold 150 eight beds. The capacity changed to 138 patients after an additional remodel occurred in 1957. The hospital was then renamed Ottawa Valley Tuberculosis Hospital in 1960, and by 1970 it was nearly empty. In 1972, the use of the second floor was shuttered and the entire hospital closed its doors in 1973. While the hospital was winding down operation on January 10th, 1972, it was agreed that the hospital would be transferred to the Allen County Board of Commissioners. Because because of its relatively remote location and the use of hard to clean up substances such as asbestos in the construction of the original 1911 building, the city of Lima did not prioritize demo the city of Lima did not prioritize demolition of the building. It's rumored to be haunted as well, and around Halloween of 2020, a large surge of trespassing at the site occurred, which led to an increased police presence and crackdown on trespassers. So don't even think of trying to visit. Well, that's all for our list of the top 10 prohibited areas in Ohio no human can enter. If you could go to any of these places, where would you go? Let us know in the comments down below, and we'll see you next time.